If you'll excuse me, I'm going to rage on several bad design decisions throughout this video, so... First one, I accidentally re-entered level 6, and so I stopped the recording, I'm like, oh... What the hell, I don't have a s- I... Must have saved state once I started, and... I didn't realize, oh, I had already beaten this, so... And I couldn't get back, and... If you press start and you press select, like some games, you don't go out, if you press start and select, you just accidentally activate bombs and stuff, so don't do that. There's no option in the menu to, like, exit, so I just thought, oh, it doesn't let you go back. That sucks, but whatever, the level was pretty easy. So we went all the way to the boss door. Guess what happens when you do that? The boss door is locked, because the game somehow thinks that, oh, if you fight the boss again, that's to your advantage, and you're cheating. Why would it not just let you leave the level, or fight the boss again, or whatever? Why does it matter? Anyway, you can come back to this door and you just exit. Why would you even think to do that? Like, if it said, oh, back to map or something on the door, I would think, yeah, you can do that, but it just says six, and you go into it at the start of the level, I would just think, oh, you could never go back. But I know that now. Anyway, it's probably in the frickin' instruction manual, but you shouldn't have to read the manual for systems like this to work. It's not that complicated. If there's a tutorial, it should be in, it should be the first time you run or play the game or whatever. When someone needs to use the manual, unless it's a very complex piece of software, which video games aren't, not from the user side, when they use the manual, you have failed. And if they can't find what they need in the manual, you have, like, giga failed. But seriously, it should never be necessary in something this simple to consult a manual, but... That wasn't really the... this was pretty early for... for consumer computing as well, but for definitely for video games. And there's also a design flaw in this level I will bitch about in a bit. You can go to the right, as you obviously saw. I did not realize that the first time, and I went down here, which... It is the way you're supposed to go, so... That's not a problem yet. So what was the other design flaw? It's in Camtasia Studio, not the game, but it's insanely annoying. So, right after you record your video, this thing pops up, and it says, Saving video to disk, or something like that. Then it goes up to 100%, and it closes, and the record button comes back. Well, the record button is there the whole time. But then after that goes away, I think, Okay, great, the file is saved. I can start recording again. But, oop, I should probably pay attention. Anyway, I thought, yeah, that means... It's saved, because it said 100% file saved. But no, it's not, and the game, it, the software does not prevent you from starting recording. The button's not grayed out or anything. And it would be perfectly reasonable to assume, yeah, it's done recording. But then after you hit the record button, a second saving file dialog pops up, and if you check your save location, you realize the file did not actually save. So, I don't know what that first pop-up is even meaning. It's apparently just a blatant lie, because the file was not saved. Anyway, that is what's called bad mapping, because what the user perceives as the system state and the actual system state are very different. And I thought I could do something without error, there was no indication it would cause a problem, but it caused a massive problem and lost my, like, 10 minutes of recording. Actually, it's cost me about 20 minutes of recording because it's happened three goddamn times on this game alone. I, I don't know, I haven't learned, but I just see that you have to understand a little bit of psychology to design your interface right, which is why... There's a field called human-computer interaction now, which... That is my area of study. Yep, we are Nova. Holy crap, that guy is freaking creepy. His eyes creep the hell out of me. He's got an epic beard, though. 
Unfortunately, it's probably going to murder me from the looks of his face. I mean, those eyes... Those eyes will just consume your soul. Anyway. One more design flaw. This looks really close, doesn't it? Those ladders over there. And I think if you saw up there, the exit door is just up above that ladder there. So it seems like you really should be able to go and, like, attach this and list that ladder. But you can't. There's no way to get up here. It seems like that right there is really close, and you should be able to get to it from, like, right here or something. But no, that is not the case. They actually have to go basically back to the start of the level. So I hate that. It really seems like there should be a ladder somewhere around here that just leads up to that area. Because it's right the hell over our heads. But no, that ladder does not exist. You know, it's a video game, so I can understand, like, maze-like qualities, but... One, it's not an adventure game, it's just a platformer slash action game. And two, any time a user is frustrated, that's a failure in design, so I consider that, at least in part, a failure in design. Once you know what to do, it's okay, so it's not... It's not as bad as the other problems I mentioned in this episode, but... As you can tell, I pay a lot of attention to interface and system design, and I... I, like every user, am extremely annoyed by problems in human-computer interaction. I just understand why I'm getting frustrated and what is incredibly easy to fix. Now, when I get to here, I always think, oh, that's a wall, let's go down here. And hey, the power suit. Let's just call that the power suit. It's the Varia suit. Yeah. Anyway, I know there's something below here. There's an area below here, so I just hopped down here last time. Yeah, you can't. That makes a little more sense, because in this game you can never fall down, but... But then I think, what the hell, this is a dead end. Well, no, if you go over here, this is not a wall, even though it appears to be one. So that's... I believe that would be another mapping error. Mapping is sort of an awkward concept, in my opinion, but it just means the perceived system state and the actual system state, they should sync together. So when the user thinks something is going on that isn't, that is very frickin' bad. That is when all sorts of errors happen. Speaking of errors, there's also something called heuristics. And... What else? Just... I think constraints also work into that, but the user should not be able to cause an error like that recording error I talked about in Camtasia. If you try to record when it's saving the file, it should just not let you record. That should be very easy. You just gray out the record button, which lets you know, hey, don't click this. And if you do click it, it just shouldn't do anything. Because that... It has the ability to take away the record button. It does that when you're actually recording. But anyway, that just pisses me off. So I fought this b boss three times now. Counting this time. He's not particularly exciting either, which doesn't help. He's just like, meh. He suffers the- this game suffers the, like, Mega Man 1 and such problem where the boss basically has a single attack and they just float around the room and they do the attack. Maybe I'm- I might be exaggerating, I'm not- they may have, like, two attacks, but... It's nothing like the X series, where bosses usually have, like, ten frickin' attacks. And they have a special wind-up for each, so you can tell how to avoid it if you're smart. That is how games should work, you should... Be able to predict what's happening just before, like... You should have a few hundred milliseconds so you can actually respond to what's going to happen, but it shouldn't be blatantly obvious, they shouldn't have a set pattern. Well, not 100% set. Anyway. That was a lot of discussion about design and stuff, so hopefully you weren't bored. But we'll continue in the next video to sector or something else.